Did you know that IELTS reading is one of the most scoring section in IELTS and people getting 7 plus bands in IELTS have at least 7.5 or more in the reading section itself. Welcome to Knowledge Hub where we are going to use our extensive 2 years of IELTS coaching experience in creating content that will give you the confidence of taking your next IELTS exam. In the reading section itself, there are 8 different type of questions and today we will be solving 2 type of questions with you right now. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we are on the IELTS reading test 1. We will be discussing a question set for fill in the blanks and one for true and false. But before going into that, let's discuss some facts about the IELTS reading test. The structure of the exam is 3 sections of 40 questions. The academic exam has 3 paragraphs while the general has 5 paragraphs. The approximate time to solve it is 1 hour. The different type of questions are matching heading, true, false, fill in the blanks, sentence completion, summary completion, flow chart and table completion. I have highlighted two of them in yellow because we are going to deal with them today. Some suggestions. Always read the questions first. Some question answers are straightforward and when you read them first and go to the passage, you can mark the answers. Secondly, always focus on the starting and ending line for all the paragraphs in the passage. The themes are generally hidden there and helps in matching heading questions. Lastly, some questions require elimination process. So questions could be tricky and you may not be able to spot the right answer in the options, but you can eliminate the wrong options to get to the right one. Next, a lot of students ask me how many correct answers they need to score a particular band. So here it is. If you are focused on scoring 7.5 and above, then in that case, you'll have to score at least 33 right in the academic exam and at least 36 right in the general exam. This is how a typical answer sheet looks for IELTS reading test. Now let's move into the fill in the blank section. The paragraph is on the left and the questions are on the right. I would request you to take at least a couple of minutes to go through the paragraph and try figuring out the answers and then we'll go through that together. So let's start solving it together. I have already gone over the questions which I would also recommend to you since it saves a lot of time. And now going over the passage, it's about an emergency procedure. The first question is, in an emergency, what should a teacher do? A teacher will either phone the office or, so when we start the passage, in the second paragraph it says, in case of an emergency, find the nearest teacher who will send a messenger at full speed to the office or call the office via phone. So send a messenger is the second option that a teacher has. That would be the answer. The next question is the signal for evacuation will normally be several. So there should be signal for evacuation. If we go in the fourth paragraph, it says warning of an emergency evacuation will be marked by a number of short bell rings. So they will make some short bell rings and that would be the signal for evacuation. That would be the answer for this question. Coming on to the third question. 
it says if possible students should leave the building by the so they should have made some arrangement for the students to evacuate the building now if we go and see the fifth paragraph it says classes will vacate the premises using the nearest staircase so whichever staircase is nearest to them they will use those staircases so this would be the answer for the third question now as they have left the uh, premises the last question is then they walk quickly to this so where they should assemble the last paragraph says each class under the teacher's supervision will move in a brisk orderly fashion to the paved quadrangle area so they have to assemble in the paved quadrangle area that is the answer to the last question still if you have any queries you can post in the comment section and i'll be happy to answer those this is how i would solve this question and i will also post the link to this complete questionnaire in the chat section moving on to the next segment which is the true and false again we'll follow the same procedure i'll give you two minutes to go over the paragraph and the questions and after that we will solve it together Let's start solving it together. I've already gone over the questions just like the previous set. And this paragraph is about some courses related to business. The first question says business basics is appropriate for beginners. Now, if we go into the first paragraph itself about business basics, it says that it gained foundation knowledge from employment in an accounts position with bookkeeping and business basics through to the intermediate level. Okay. And it's suitable for anyone requiring knowledge from the ground up. So this line means that anyone who needs knowledge from the basics to the higher level, this course is good for them. So hence, it is an appropriate course for beginners. That's true. The second question is bookkeeping has no practical component. Now, if we go to the bookkeeping section, it says this course will provide students with a comprehensive understanding of bookkeeping and a great deal of hands on experience. When you say a great deal of hands on experience, it means that it will involve some practical questionnaires. It will involve some practical work for the students to be done. So in my theory, this is false because bookkeeping has practical components. The third question is bookkeeping is intended for advanced students only. Now, in the bookkeeping section, if we go through it, it does not talk anywhere about whether it is for intermediate, beginners or advanced students. It only talks about the course and people are supposed to do advanced bookings. So don't get confused here. This course only requires an advanced booking, but it's not essentially for advanced students. We don't know about it. So in my theory, this is not given. So this is typically how you would solve this uh, true and false question set. Not given is a bit tricky. There you have to justify in terms of like whether you are getting that answer from this passage or not. If you're not getting any info related to that, then not given is the best answer in that. In the end, I would just like to say that 
We have provided you with the link of the complete test in the chat section. For any questions, reach us out in the comment section. If you want to join our classes, contact on our WhatsApp number 416-993-8835 and please subscribe to our channel so that we keep on posting such informational videos for you. Thank you so much.